on to a bit more somber news, though. It was announced over the weekend that uh, our very own Dr. Fernando Cuellar passed away over the weekend. He lost his battle to cancer. Mm -hmm. You would know he has been a familiar face on our Open Your Eyes couch here. We've met with him on numerous occasions. He was one of the primary faces uh, in medical services that we spoke to as it relates to our fight with COVID-19. Um, I know that uh, he also had many, many patients that uh, has been with him for decades. So we just wanted to go down memory lane a bit and, and showcase just some of those conversations that we had with him over the years. Happy that you're here today to talk about men's health because we men always feel a little bit jealous that most attention many times is placed on, on women's health. I, I see many times in the office, oh, my job is stressing out, I got one boss, like deadlines and things. Approach the person. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I find that people are afraid to approach yeah. their, their superiors or bosses and talk. And who knows the person? Many times it happens, hey, could I make with talk about this because. Or you're the, the bank when you can't you're, you're, make the you're, complete you're, payment. You're, you're, you're asked for something unrealistic. I can't produce 10 reports for Friday. Cardiovascular disease is one of the leading causes of morbidity, meaning reasons people go for consultation, and mortality, reasons people die um, throughout the world. And Belize, of course, is no exception. More and more we are seeing that um, these conditions, which now have a unique terminology, the non-communicable diseases, mm -hmm. hypertension, diabetes, um, are leading more to heart disease and strokes. We don't need to forget four-lane highways and properly marked and cat eyes and yeah. all of these mm -hmm. things. We need to monitor and implement what's there, okay? We need to spend more money, uh, got the traffic patrols out there with their radar gun, mm -hmm. put the legislation in place that if you go over your speed limit, you're gonna boom, take it, you yes. take it, and yeah. if you come back again, you'll get your license you, suspended. Yeah, yeah. Fluid content becomes less than it should, mm -hmm. so you get dehydrated, parched lips, dry mouth, um, pee pee tonda, color, feel weak, feel crampy, um, and then you just start to feel out of it. No? Sometimes a little bit confused, you know, quite focused. Those are signs and signals that something is going wrong. And there's no real liquid fluid that can substitute water. Water is the best hydrant, mm -hmm. best fluid that we can use to hydrate ourselves. And the vaccine has shown, and especially now in others, is showing that people who are hospitalized and dying are the unvaccinated. That's, there's no question about that data. Everywhere you see it in the States, in Belize also, we are seeing that people who are seriously ill are those who have not become unvaccinated. Mind you, the vaccine not stop you from getting the virus. So that's that a no-brainer. That's no question we need to inquire about. You get the vaccine, okay, and you could still catch the virus. You could still get sick, but you're not supposed to get seriously ill or your risk of dying is very, very minimum. Not the, not the depend on the authorities for, 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 for make this thing, make we get out of this thing. And, 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 and take the opportunity to make call out the Ministry of Health, make them get the act together. Because they got good spin doctors, they were saying, well, everything good, everything good. But we're not going to know DHS, we're not going to know CEO, blah, 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 blah. We, we, we did like what? So that time for me, the authorities, the government, fix that, fix that Ministry of Health. Um, and, and make me feel like we got people in this community. There's more than enough uh, data that shows that smoking leads to conditions such as what we refer to as COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, chronic bronchitis are the two main examples there, where people destroy their lungs, they, they form a lot of scarring of the lungs and have them have trouble breathing uh, after a certain time of smoking. No? It's always good to have a family history, to know your, your mother, your father, your grandparents' family, medical history to see if there's any things like diabetes or high blood pressure or cancer or strokes or heart disease in the family. Then you would discuss the symptoms and then you would have a, a physical check, you know, your blood pressure taken, your heart sounding, your lungs, um, very simple but basic um, signs you would look for in a, in a physical examination to see if there's any problem.
That was a snapshot of the many interviews and many appearances that Dr. Fernando Cuellar had with us here at uh, Channel 5, both on Open Your Eyes and, of, of course, certainly in Healthy Living in our news segment. We have been joined in studio this morning by Drs. Jorge Hidalgo and Pedro Arriaga. They are colleagues of Dr. Fernando Cuellar. Now, first of all, I, I want to acknowledge the fact that Dr. Cuellar was one of the prominent faces in uh, the healthcare system here in Belize, both private and public, and he was quite outspoken and strong in his convictions where medicine and, and health are concerned. Uh, with that, I want to invite you gentlemen to share with us, first of all, your thoughts on the passing of your colleague in the medical profession. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting us. And uh, it's, a, it's weird to be sitting right here talking about someone that, uh, of course, uh, is appreciate, love, and, and of course, uh, recognize a, an important leader of the community in, in the field of medicine. Uh, I want to extend my condolences to the family and as well as to Belize Medical Associate. No? Uh, I just uh, remember when we started the, the, the battle for COVID, uh, and as uh, we said before, we are only, at that point, three uh, intensivists in the country. Uh, it's difficult to say that we are missing one right now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's, that is something very difficult to, for us to say and to approach and, and, and also to, to accept, but, uh, and especially for someone who uh, we recognize as an important leader of the community, as Dr. Fernando Cuellar uh, uh, always, uh, as you mentioned, and is saying this outspoken and, and fight for the rights of the community, mm -hmm. the medical community and the community in general. Yeah. Yourself, Dr. Arriaga? Well, um, I knew Tony for quite some time, you know. I remember I met him as a medical student when I was in training in um, internal medicine in Guatemala. And he was, from the beginning, outspoken, very passionate. <laughs> um, um, our families, they get together a few times there. And we have dinner, have lunch. So we were close at the time. And um, we get separated because I came here to work and he continued his studies in Guatemala City. Afterwards, you know, he came back. Uh, we spent some time, you know, at the Old Belize City Hospital. And I remember we were there. <laughs> for the first time we did a, a peritoneal dialysis in this country, <laughs> where he was so concerned about the patient there. Actually, the patient survived. And um, he moved uh, to go study, you know, do specialization in internal medicine, and we get separated again. And uh, his return, he came back to Orange Rock. I was the internist for a few years there. Mm -hmm. And a um, um, few years after, you know, he joined um, KHMH and as the first intensivist in the country and uh, working as the, the, um, the administrator of the hospital too. Um, we were close at the time. And uh, he moved to the private sector. I stay in the private sector. Um, and, but we still, you know, get together from time to time to discuss patients and transfer patients from one entity to the next one. And as Dr. Uh, Hidalgo said here, you know, he was a um, very special person, um, very passionate, very outspoken, always caring for patients, always very there for the um, well-being of the country, I'd say, you know, uh, and, and the entire health community in this country. So uh, it's extremely sad that he passed. And my condolences also to the family, you know. Yeah. I think, um one of the things that would certainly be fair to say was that he gave his entire life uh, to his work. Um, he would oftentimes mention it on the couch here that he, he works very long hours, um, of course in emergency, but also during the day as well, the services that he provides. And of course, as you mentioned, Dr. Arriaga, you would have, you would have met him while studying as well. And he's known to be uh, a doctor that does not mince words, so much so that he would speak to you in, in Creole, both uh, in person e and even on TV as well. Would you say uh, that that part of his personality was what drew people to him? 
Certainly, I think you know um, he was a man of the of the, of the people. Mm -hmm. He used to talk, you know, the uh, uh, Creole most of the time with people, and uh, even in um, in um, in uh, in uh, meetings, you know, clinical meetings we have, he always was there fighting for the rights of patients, you know, and mm -hmm. that was a very characteristic of Dr. Um, Koyar at the time. Mm -hmm. I think what stands out um, for many of us Belizeans, those who have interacted with him one-to-one, -one, or those of us who have followed his many appearances in the media, is the fact that this is someone who was well-learned and is always sort of ahead of the curve where reading up and following up on the latest developments in medicine and treatment are concerned. Uh, numerous times he was on the couch and he was fully prepared in terms of discussing the latest variants of COVID and, and what the implications of it would have been locally and what have you. I know that it's very difficult, if next to impossible, to replace someone like him who had that wealth of knowledge. But in terms of the Belizean medical community, um, how are you guys looking at this void? I mean, perhaps it's still very early on, but some thought perhaps has already been given to um, what happens next in terms of your community? Well, losing someone is a, is a, is a very unique one. And, uh, and losing someone like Dr. Cuellar is, is a very unique, it's, as you say, it's very difficult to, to replace mm -hmm. uh, someone uh, in that caliber and in that respect. Uh, mean that uh, uh, it's difficult to say, and, and again, I believe, and, and as as you, the medical community, is a news that uh, it takes everyone uh, to surprise. You no, know, because mm -hmm. even that everybody, we knew that he went for treatment. I believe everybody was with the hope that he is going to put the battle that he did, mm -hmm. um, and we, we, we probably were expecting a different outcome, but uh, mm -hmm. life is like that. You know, it's difficult to, to know what's going to happen. Uh, and again, I think so, uh, we are still digesting the news, and mm -hmm. uh, we need to see what's going to happen. Yeah. It took us all by surprise, because it was only <clears throat> perhaps two or so weeks ago that we announced the fact that he is in the United States and that he went for a different treatment only to find out that he's being diagnosed with cancer. And only a few short weeks later, we're here now announcing his passing. It feels like a sort of a whirlwind, right? I don't know that many people would have been able to fully grasp the fact that this happened within less than three weeks, mm -hmm. right? Um, so personally, my condolences to the family and the colleagues as well. Um, you guys as, as practitioners and, and as prominent members of the medical field here in Belize, um, very close to each other, you have discussions to talk about private and public health and what have you. What has been the conversation in terms of uh, when, when you guys found out that your colleague is ill and fighting cancer in the United States? What has been that conversation amongst yourselves? Well, uh, as I mentioned, it's a, a, it took us for surprise, you know, mm -hmm. and, and of course realizing that uh, uh, a condition like cancer is like that, and, and, and probably as we most of the time trying to uh, tell our patients, sometimes uh, and, and most of the time, this type of diagnosis it get everybody not only a, the, a, as a regular person, that, uh, but it take us most of the time for surprise and we, we, we realize that we are having cancer in a, in a, sometimes in a very late stages you know, and, and, and the battle for cancer is, is, is a very unique one as well. You know. mm -hmm. uh, and of course again uh, we discuss and, and, and trying to understand what, what happened and, and what potentially it could be a, an outcome but we as I mentioned we never expect uh, this type of news, no? Yeah. In fact, I believe that Tony was a very private person too, you know. It's extremely difficult to discuss, you know, health issues, um, not talking about the private, you know, uh, mm -hmm. instances in our bodies, you know. And, uh, and, and I think, you know, this is one of the reasons why uh, we don't have as much interaction with him, you know, in the past months concerning his health status. Mm -hmm. And um, 
and uh, we have interaction from the uh, uh, professional point of view, as I uh, uh, talked to you before, and, um, and especially during the time that we have the COVID uh, um, outbreak here, we were, we were very close in a sense that we were interacting, um, trying to establish the guidelines for treatment patients here and how we're supposed to be treating our patients the best. Um, but um, it's, it's so sad that this happened so fast now. Yeah. During COVID-19, the three of uh, you guys formed a, a front line of sorts to respond to the effects of COVID-19 and provide COVID-19 care, even though you all represented separate institutions. Um, and you even cared for Dr. Cuellar when he himself caught COVID-19. Sitting here this morning, we're speaking to you guys as professionals in the medical field, but I have to ask, does it feel like you lost a friend first and foremost? Yeah, so, as I told you before, you know, uh, Tony was my friend for quite some time, you know, and it was a, a part of my family, and um, it's, it's a loss, uh, not only from a professional point of view, but a personal. And uh, we were, um, at the time of the outbreak, we were very close, you know, with Jorge, although we were working, as you say, in different kind of institutions. Uh, first of all, because we thought that uh, uh, it's at that time that uh, we have a national uh, problem, you know, that we had to get together in such a way that we could get the best shot or uh, the best, you know, interventions for our patients and try to bring them back to life. And, um, and um, during all those years of the, of the pandemic, you know, we used in track, you know, with the creation of national guidelines. And also we were um, working together to um, discuss patients sometimes, you know, from time to time. Mm -hmm. uh, in such a way, we could try to get the best of the experience for the community, you know. Yeah. Dr. Hidalgo? Yes. Uh, uh, again, uh, the COVID-19 was a unique opportunity for the three of us to get together. Mm -hmm. Uh, as as uh, with one common interest, and and this was a good time in the sense that uh, we shared a, a different experiences uh, in terms of treatment management of patients. Also, we create a a, a continuous medical education program that uh, became uh, the, of interest not only for the country but uh, it was a worldwide uh, uh, program. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we uh, uh, special with this uh, continual medical education is that at, uh, at the end we have uh, the part of having to discuss the part that, that we were bringing that day and, and uh, Dr. Guiar was the, 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 the person that always start and open the discussion and open the field mm -hmm. uh, for everyone. I mean that. Uh, was very interesting and, and at time for COVID-19. Yeah. In concluding our conversation <coughs> with you guys on Dr. Cuellar, I'd like for you guys to share with us your fondest memories, either professional or otherwise, uh, the time you've spent with him. Well, it, it, it was, as uh, Dr. Arias say, most of our meetings was to uh, discuss professional cases, uh, trying to uh, see what should be the suggestion that we have for uh, improve, uh, improvement of the health sector. And, um, and he, used, he used to call me Jorgito. No? <laughs> 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 uh, that's that's the, the, when he called me by phone or we, mm -hmm. uh, or we would get together and say, Hi, uh, hola, Jorgito. Mm -hmm. I, mean that, uh, I just remember that. Yeah. Uh, but as, as, as I told you before, and uh, I remember the first time I met him, and I was, it was a, a nice shift, you know, in, in the hospital. It was, he was really upset, you know, <laughs> about one of the situations that happened in the hospital. And uh, I had to calm him down, you know, because he was really upset about the entire situation. But um, I, I uh, Tony was so passionate and outspoken, you know, and, uh, and, and I think, you know, he always going to be remembered by his patients mm -hmm. because of the care and doctrine it was as a pioneer for us, you know, because he was a pioneer in, in the field of medicine, pioneer in the field of intensive care, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, as always a physician and a personality is supposed to be, um, you know, fighting for the rights of patients and the community in this country. Yeah. And, uh, and that's going to be um, the, the, my memory is supposed to be with me all the time, you know, a passionate person, 
always going to be outspoken, trying to fight for the care of people they're supposed to have in the in the in the um, in the health care in, in the country. Really. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you so much for stopping by this morning um, and taking the time out of your schedule very early to speak about uh, the contributions of Dr. Fernando Cuellar and, of course, how we can remember him even after. Sure. Thank you. And I'll also use this opportunity to say on behalf of myself and Isani and, of course, the staff here at Channel 5, our deepest condolences to the family and, of course, the Belize Medical Associates for the passing of Dr. Cuellar.